So I recently came across a new 2E interface for Mastodon. Now, keep in mind that this thing is very, very new, and I know that programs like Toot already exist, but what I wanted to do today is talk about this new program, and I guess talk about what I think it can improve upon, and also, rather than just being negative the entire time, I do want to talk about what it does do well. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. Okay, so first up, this is the GitHub page for TUT. It, You'll notice very quickly, if you've seen Toot before, this is what Toot looks like, this is what TUT looks like. This program is clearly very inspired by Toot, and that's probably fine because by the looks of it, Toot is a really good program. I haven't run Toot myself, but by the looks of it looks pretty good. Anyway, let's go back to the program we're actually looking at today though. So, I did mention that it is very new. It is, it has eight commits, and the release version, I believe, is something like 0.8. Yeah, 0 0.01. So this is like the first initial release of the application. Now it does work. So for just general posting on Mastodon, it works really well. So if you want to install it, there is a, a list of binaries here. So what you can do is you can just download the binary and then copy it into your user slash bin or wherever it is that you want to store your executables and then just run it like that. You could even just run it from your home if you really wanted to, you could just run it from your home directory, but I want to just put it with the rest of my executables. If you'd prefer to compile it though, all you're going to have to do is clone the repo and then just run go build or go install. I just downloaded the binary because that was just easier to do. So let's actually jump into the application and see what it can do because as I said before, it can do generally what you need it to do. So when you first run it, it's going to be a little bit different to when I've run it now. So when you first run it, it's going to prompt you to give a Mastodon instance you want to connect to. Then once you've done that, it'll open up your web browser and get you to just log into that. Then once you've done that, it should give you an application ID. So just copy and paste that application ID back into this terminal program. And then you'll be connected to your timeline or to Mastodon, I guess. So it works fairly well basically. You can cycle through the different posts with the J and the K keys. You can also use the up and down arrow keys, which is cool. So for any of this media and I guess also the hashtags in here, if you press O, that brings up a little window to open up any of this stuff. So if we want to open up this link down the bottom here, I would like to be able to just press enter on this, but you have to press O at this stage. So if you press enter, it's not going to do anything. If you press O though, it's going to open up in your web browser. So that'll just open up that link, and this takes me, I don't even remember what post that was on. Uh, this was on, I don't want to see the Hyundai ad. Oh right, the newest video I did. So I'm not sure when this video is going to go up, but yeah, anyway, that was the newest video as of the recording. So we can open up any of these hashtags as well. I'm not sure what that's going to do. So that will just search Mastodon Social for that hashtag. Okay, that makes sense. I actually haven't tested a lot of this stuff, so this is kind of just me learning this program as we go. but. It's a pretty simple program, so it's not really a big deal. If you want to look at the thread for a post, you can press T on it. So obviously I don't have anything there besides the actual post, but let's go with someone who actually does have some stuff like with DistroTube. So as we can see, that basically brings up a list of all of the replies. So we can just scroll through these. Obviously like before, if any of these have a link in them, we can just press O and that'll bring up a list of all of the links. Now, once again, like with before, we can press O to open this up. It opens up in my web browser, but I assume that at some point, all of this is supposed to work within the actual program because there's no reason to open up your web browser to show someone's profile. I'm guessing, I think that was one of the features that was talked about to be added. Uh, so yeah, view user profile. So that will eventually be supported within the program. So I assume that hashtags are also gonna be on there. Yeah, the hashtags are also on that list as well. Cool. So all we can do to quit out of this is just press escape and press escape again. Now you can do things like favorites, those work fine, but they are a little bit janky on here. So let's say we want to favorite this post right here. It doesn't actually change that I favorite it down here. If I quit out of the program though, uh, we can do that by pressing Q and we reopen it as we will see when it opens back up in just a moment, there we go. It's now changed over to unfavorite. So it looks like it's not actually, I guess, updating the interface properly and that's a little bit annoying but it's not a big deal I guess. So I did say you had to press O to open up media but I got that wrong. It's actually you press M to open up media, O to open up any links. So you press M to open up media and as we will see that'll basically just open that up in whatever your default 
viewer for that is. So I assume that if one had a video in the actual media attached, then that would open it up like that. Let's see with this GIF here. Yeah, so it opens up GIFs within my program for GIFs, which I've just got set as MPV. It doesn't really matter what I use, but yeah, I'm using MPV for that. So you might have noticed when I scrolled down a bit, it actually loaded some more. So the way that loading more works is you just scroll and it will just keep loading stuff. I assume there's probably a limit at some point because otherwise it's going to overflow your RAM, but I have a feeling that that limit's probably not there yet. But unless you have a very, very small amount of RAM, you're probably not gonna run into that issue, so it's not a big deal, really. One thing I did notice that's a bit weird about this program is if you look down here, you can press V to view it. So I assume that's there for any of the like really, really long posts, but doing it right now, because I don't have any long posts here, it just kind of locks up the application. As we can see on the bottom left here, it does have like a Vim style view of telling you what mode you're in. So you can see that you're in the view mode, but right now view doesn't seem to really do much. So I'm not really sure the point of it. I haven't tested deleting posts, so let's make one. If we press C, that will bring us up a prompt to actually make a post. If you press E from here, this will, this will bring up a buffer in whatever your default text editor is. I'm not sure because there's no documentation for this, but I believe it's pulling from your editor variable, not from your default MIME type for a plain text file, so just keep that in mind. Once again, that's not documented anywhere, so I'm not really sure right now. So we can just say this, this is a post. Cool, we save that, and that brings us back to this prompt here. So we can also press P to post it. We can toggle CW. I'm not sure what CW is. I don't use Mastodon much, but that probably makes sense to someone who actually does use Mastodon. You can add some content warning text, and you can attach some media. So if you go to attach some media, it'll basically just bring you up a prompt. Let's go add file, and you can just start typing in the path for that media. So let's say pictures slash screenshots slash Mastodon. So this was the picture I just showed you just before. So we've attached that now, and now if we press escape, that'll just take us back to this previous prompt. And if we press P, that will then just post that. And it takes just a moment to do that. Cool, as we can see here, this now has our new post here. So we can actually view this and we can favorite this. So if we go and view this on the web interface for Mastodon, so it should have my post here now. I haven't actually properly tested this. Let's see if this actually works. Yep, cool, that has worked now. And it, as we saw before, I've also favorited it. So if we wanted to delete that, we just press D. And I don't know if it's gonna bring up like a confirmation prompt or anything, or if it's just gonna delete it, or if it's not gonna work. Is it not gonna do anything? Does it not work? Maybe it doesn't work. Everything else works fine. So favoriting, posting, attaching media, all of that sort of stuff worked perfectly. I guess you can't delete stuff just yet, but I guess it's not a big deal. I actually take back what I just said. I just checked the web interface and the post has been deleted. So like with that problem we saw with favorites before, what was happening was the uh, interface wasn't actually getting updated. So if we run that again, as we'll see, the post won't be here this time, but I guess it's just not properly refreshing the list like it was doing with the favorites. I assume Boost has the exact same problem. So yeah, just keep that in mind. I haven't tested replies yet, so let's go and do that. So let's just reply to this one here. So it looks like it works in the exact same way as making a post, which makes sense. So if we go edit and say something like, this is a reply, save that. And if we go post, I assume if we press T on this, it'll show us, yeah, okay, it shows us a reply there. It shows that as a separate, is that a separate post? Okay, what has it done over here? Let's have a look at the web interface. Sort of, yeah, that, no, that's working fine. It's just Mastodon's weird with the way it does replies, I guess. No, yeah, that, that does work how it's supposed to work. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so it seems like that works as you would expect as well. So I guess we can delete this as well. And by the looks of it, it doesn't update properly on the TUI interface. Yeah, it, it is updating, maybe, wait, what? Has it not updated here? Yeah, I, I have no idea what just happened, but if we quit out of this, and we just reopen it, then the reply should be gone on here as well. Yeah, it is. Okay, I don't know what happened just before. I think it just had a bit of a hiccup, or maybe I just pressed the key wrong or something. I'm not even sure what I did. Anyway, one thing I didn't show you from before is you can actually switch timelines as well. So you have Vim style access, which is cool. I've just been quitting with Q, but if you want to quit like this as well, you can go colon and Q. 
So, oh, that's cool. There's a, uh, a context menu for the commands. So I'm guessing there's going to be more commands brought into it at some point as well. So one thing you can do, though, is switch the timeline that you're looking at. So right now I'm guessing this is the home timeline we're looking at. But let's go look at the uh, federated one. So if we go timeline, does it give us options there? No, it doesn't give us options for that. That would be nice to see. So if you do timeline, then give you a context menu of the different timelines you can actually select. So if we go federated, is that going to switch over? Yes, it is. Now, I'm not going to open up any of these because I know that there is a lot of porn on the, uh, the federated list. So I'm not going to do that. But it is cool that this works. So if we switch over to another timeline, then... Oh, also tab completion works in case you didn't notice that I was doing that as well. Uh, what's another one we can do? We can go over to local. I don't know what local is. I'm guessing that's local to... I have no idea what this is, actually. I don't, I don't use Mastodon much. I kind of just have a Mastodon account because that's kind of what you do as a tech YouTuber, but I don't really use it much. Anyway, uh, this looks like it works pretty well, to be honest. So if we want to get back to the main timeline, we can just switch back to that by going... Is it home? Yes, it's home. Okay, cool. So that takes us back to the main home timeline. So all of this works pretty well. It's nowhere near as complete as something like Toot is. So I'm probably going to do a separate video on Toot. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see how I feel about that. But if I do start using Mastodon more, I'm probably going to start just using it through Toot because this is just a cool looking program. And also they have, is that a trumpet? Trombone? No, what am I saying? Not a trombone. Of course not a trumpet. It's a trumpet. Pretty sure? Is that a, is that a trumpet? Someone correct me if that's not a trumpet. Anyway, um, yeah, Toot, as I was saying, is considerably more complete. It's been out far longer than TUT has been, so I would expect it to be. It's been out since 2018. This has been out since yesterday, <laughs> and it has eight commits. Actually, when is the first commit? Is it actually from yesterday or is it a bit further back than that? Oh, no. Sorry, it's been out for six days. So, yeah. It hasn't even been out for a week as of the time of recording, so I would entirely expect it to have a lot of problems. To be honest, it actually works really well considering how new it is, so that is awesome. I wouldn't, as I said, wouldn't recommend using this, but once it does improve a bit more, it probably will be a really, really good 2 interface for Mastodon. If this is the state that it's in right now, I can't wait to see how much better it gets. Plus, unlike Toot, it's written in Go instead of Python, so... Hopefully that means it's going to be quick, but you can obviously write slow Go code if you don't know what you're doing. I don't know how good of a developer this guy is, so maybe it'll be bad, maybe it won't be. Either way, right now it's in a pretty good state. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated up on that corner I've got the playlist of this videos in so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this down below I've got my social links so that'll be in my discord my telegram and all of that sort of stuff so go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates I've also got my support links down below so that'll be my patreon and various other links like that so go check that out if you do want to support the channel but as always if you don't want to then you don't have to but any help will be really appreciated and lastly I've got my alternate video platforms so that'll be my bittube and my library. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.